the stand-up comedian yes. guy that we know because so, that's another you know avenue yes. that you do and you seem pretty successful at that it, it was very scary um three years ago i, I wanted to I, actually me and my my best friend uh we were Brandon Fobbs, who was on the wire too. We we had this pack that we were gonna start do stand up, and um, I, I chickened out. Like, I, he 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 went he went and did stand up at Starbucks. We went and it didn't go so well. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I wasn't quite ready. And that was like probably five or six years ago. Yeah. So he started 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 doing it, and it was just like I was like, Nah, I'm not quite ready yet. Mm -hmm. And then you know, three years ago when I decided I was gonna do it. I was at open mic and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm ready. I got jokes written. My heart was beating out my chest. I'm like, man, I'm about to leave. I, went, I was about to run out the door. They called my name. My first time up, I did about nine minutes. And um, that was that was the beginning of, of of where I'm at now. And just being able to do nine minutes your first time up. Well, how was like the crowd reaction? The crowd to was you? great. I mean, yeah. I, was, I was just up there just talking to them, just like we're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key to um, having a successful um, career in, in comedy, just being able to be one on one with people and mm -hmm. be able to, um, for them to understand where you're coming from and mm -hmm. to be able to connect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think when I could take situations that that I went through in my life and people were like, oh yeah, I, mean, I, I would think they're a crazy girl like that yeah. or certain things, it just makes it more believable and more mm -hmm. um, they're in tune to what you're saying. Yeah, words from a wise guy. That was, <laughs> so a great tip right there. That was like a million dollar tip right there, <laughs> Melvin Jackson Jr. So anybody want to go on a stand up. Be relatable. Yes. Right? Yes. So, and I love that. I, and you are definitely a very relatable person. Like, you seem very down to earth. And that's probably why you've been so successful yes. in your career, for sure. So, let's talk about you've done producing as well. And I know you've yes. done some of your own projects. Correct. So, talk about that. Well, um, one of the first projects I kind of came on board in producing was um, uh, a documentary called The Vanishing Black Male. And we did that out of New Jersey, and that was that was a great experience. And I've always just been a, um, a student of the game. So when I'm on set, or when I was on the set of the wire, I just watched and s to see what the cameraman did, what the director do, I mean did, so that I can be able to do that for myself. So producing, I feel like I always like to create, I always like to be hands on with situations. Yeah. So I got a chance to produce my own sitcom called This Is My Life. So why are you laughing? Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to hire my friends. Mm -hmm. Great actors that, that um, That's awesome. you know, just a great at what they do, don't work enough, but it was just to showcase my talent as well as theirs. Yeah. And um, other projects like um, the Scandal Skid, a short, um, short film with um, produced and, and co directed, kind of like uh, paying homage to Scandal. And then I did another one, Eternal, Eternal Affairs. <laughs> so it's just, I, I just feel like I, I need to be behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera because I can do more. Yeah. And I love producing and being able to create and get projects out there, great projects. Yeah, yeah, and I love your mentality and your perspective with that. You want to be able to know how to do a little bit of everything. Right. I think in this industry, that is incredible. Yeah. So let's kind of talk a little bit about, I know you have something a little near and dear to your right. heart, something that you're an advocate for. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, last year, April, uh, my father, I guess he was going through some situations and I didn't know how deep they were. And um, he called called me um, one one Sunday morning. I said I was going to church. We told each other we uh, um, that we love love each other. And uh, three hours later, I got a phone call saying that my father shot himself. And um, I was in church when it happened and um, he ended up passing away. Um, so it was just one of those situations. You never know what someone's going through. And my father was one of the strongest person people I know. And um, I never would have thought he would have committed suicide because he was against it. So it was just like, man, it, was, it, it took me to a place where I was like, wow. But in that moment, like a lot of my friends and family just came to my aid. And it was, a, it was a blessing because, you you know, out here I feel like a lot of my, my friends are close, like just like family. And they stopped whatever they were doing and they came to, to, to my aid. And mm -hmm. they all came over and cooked for me. And... They were just there for me, prayed for me, and, and you know, they all we all go to church together. So it was just, it was a great thing to see, to be like, this is how much you're loved and cared about, where people will stop what they're doing just to be there for you, because I would do the same. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I now I'm kind of like an advocate for um, suicide prevention and depression, because I feel like, you know, people are always going through things. We've all been through yeah. depression. Yeah. But we try to. Um, you just never know. Yeah, we put it to the side like like it's nothing, and I just think that we need to look at Robin Robin Williams. He's like yeah. he's a guy who was comedian, and yeah. we're all going through stuff. So we just need to support each other and always check on each other, and make sure that we're all right, and and not just 
you know, brush it off. Like if you see your boy, uh, he's depressed over a girl, oh man, just brush it off as a girl. Like take it serious because yeah. you just never know what a person's uh, mind frame is and what, they're, you know, what, they may do, what they may do. That's true. And you're so right about that because especially like where we live, like mm -hmm. LA is such a fast paced life. And I think it's it's easy for a lot of people to get caught up in that right. and they got this going on and oh, I gotta be here. And you're getting pulled in all sorts of directions mm -hmm. and you kind of forget about family and friends. So it's really good to hear that, you know, from someone from the industry that's so busy that you still have that kind of perspective. Right. So I love that a lot. And so since that was pretty recent, it sounds like, well, last year, right? right. I mean, it sounds like you know, your dad still got to see a good chunk yeah. of your life and yeah. all the success and the projects you've done. So I'm sure he was very, very proud. Yes, I mean, he's bragging about me all the time. So, yeah. I mean, it's just very, it's a hard thing to go to because it's like we were very close and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that you, you never get over. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I have to speak about it to be able to heal from it yeah. because it's still, you know, it's still painful. I have my moments. I'll be yeah. balling in the corner somewhere, yeah. but I know that he's with me. His spirit is here and um, he's proud of me. He wants me to keep pushing forward yeah. and just be a blessing to others. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Touching, you know, the lives of others. Yeah. And I think through you being an advocate for, for that topic, because right. it's such a sensitive topic for a lot of people, I think you'll be able to relate because you've gone through it. And I think people are more responsive to someone that they can relate to. Right. Yeah. So we know that dad is up there yes, smiling down yes. at you right now. And he's probably waiting to see what's coming up next exactly. for you. I'm wanting to know what's next. <laughs> So, what's some of the things that you have that you're working on now? You have any top secret stuff? Yeah, well, I'm, on, I'm working. I'm on uh, part of three web series right now. One is okay. called Possessions. Um, it's a football web series we shoot out in San Francisco. Okay. I play Coach Don. Um, we got we have distribution for it, and, it's, and we have our own channel now, okay. and it's gonna be um, across uh, so many different platforms. It's gonna be on TV, about so 2.3 nice. million um, viewers, 23 million subscribers. Um, nice. Um, to the channel that it's with. Um, I'm also a part of a new sh a show called um, Lipstick, Lipstick mm -hmm. the Series, um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a take on Sex in the City about, oh, okay. uh, with you know different different race, African American, Hispanic women. Oh, that um, sounds like something yeah, I should be Yeah, I think, I think and they're dealing, they're dealing <laughs> with fashion, they're fashion and cosmetic lines, so you'll, okay. you'll love that. And then I'm also part of a, um, the web series called The One. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a blessing to be a part of, you know, great opportunities and great situations where now web series are becoming TV shows and becoming the new thing. Yeah, definitely. That it used to be like, oh, you know the web series? Oh, now yeah. it's like, no. It's like people are getting People are getting signed off situations yeah. like that. Um, and I just did a, a parody with Russell Simmons' company. Um, we did Straight Outta Compton, which is, yeah. um, well, actually we did Straight Outta Philly, which was a parody okay. on Straight Outta Compton. <laughs> So it, it, it's just definitely great when you're able to do some, some things. And, um, you know, right now I'm campaigning to, to be... The, yes, talk about yes, that. I'm That's exciting. I'm campaigning to play Corrupt in the Tupac movie. And they're also doing another movie called Dog Pound for Life. So mm -hmm. I would love to play Corrupt. And I think that it's a role fit for me. And mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, show the cast and directors, producers and directors why they should consider me. Yeah. So I'm and I do like where your mind is at because we were talking about that earlier right. when you're like getting ready now yes. even though it's not even out yet. Exactly. And I think that is just, that's so inspiring and I, a lot of actors probably don't even, you know, do stuff right. like that. So I, I like that. What kind of, what put that in your mind to just start campaigning like early on? Well, because, you know, someone reached out to me and said that the movie was happening and um, they wanted me to also play Corrupt into something they were doing, a short film they were going to do. Um, and a lot of people t used to, you know, tell me I look like Corrupt mm -hmm. and I got a chance to meet him. And I'm just like, why not? Why not something that, that, you know, just like if someone was the audition for Eddie Murphy role, I think I would be perfect for that too because I get told I look like Eddie Murphy. So why not? put in people's mind, like, yeah, I can see this guy portray this. Why not already put that in their mind that this yeah. is the role that you should portray? Yeah. Um, so I'm just doing the work. You okay. know, I can't just say I wanna, I'm gonna do it. I gotta actually do the work too. I gotta yeah. do my research. I gotta start preparing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have, like, people don't even know he's from Philadelphia. You know, they think he, you know, he rubs the West Coast so hard. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he goes hard like, with from that. Philly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he from Philly, so. <laughs> We'll yeah, say West you know, Coast all day. East Coast, I'm from D.C., so we're not too about two and a half hours drive from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you were saying that pe a lot of people say you look like, or you resemble Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Can you do the Eddie Murphy laugh? Sexy <laughs> <laughs> <Such a> chocolate. <laughs> love that movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So, I love that. Okay, so I always like to ask, because, you know, you're very inspiring, for the people that want to just go down the route that you've gone down, yeah. whether it's acting or like producing or stand-up comedian, right. 
or like the music industry, right. what's like one ideal piece of advice you would give maybe to young people right. to what's something you would tell them so that they, you know, stay focused or just some advice? I would say um, do the work. No, no. If you want to do something that is going to take hard work, it's mm -hmm. going to take a lot of no's before you get a yes. And I um, mean, I don't know. They believe in, but I believe in God, and I always keep, you know, God in my heart and know that if, if it's something Jesus. that he wants, he's gonna bless it. If he's yeah. something he don't want, he's not gonna bless it, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like there was times where I felt like I could have been a lot further in my career, but he didn't feel like I was ready. Mm -hmm. So I had to listen to that because I would have maybe blew that chance. And you don't always get a second chance in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So I, I always just say that if it's something you want to do, just do the work, stay focused, stay passionate about it, and. Um, don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, be your, be your, if you gotta be your number one supporter, be your number one supporter. Yeah. But yeah. you always, most time you're gonna have mom and dad in your corner. And my mom was always in my corner and she, you know, believed in me before anybody else did. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to keep, keep wanting it mm -hmm. and keep pushing forward. Yeah. N another million dollar tip, <laughs> words from a wise man. Don't give up, have faith. Right. And keep pushing forward. Yeah. Those are all great words of wisdom. I love it. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you. So I always like to ask like at least like one fun question or like random question. Right. So you already talked about one thing that not a lot of people know about you. What's is there anything else that not a lot of people know about you? Um I used to well I still do, I write poetry and I okay. um I wrote a poetry book and then I wrote half of another poetry book mm -hmm. and that was my thing, that was my outlet to mm -hmm. writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, then I, I used to rap too, um, oh, and I okay. still do. Do you do now, like freestyle or anything? I Man, I have a little. I have something <laughs> I wrote that I can rap if you want to. Yeah. Can uh, we get that to the camera, please? Let's do yes. It. Only on Foxy TV. It's your boy J Reed rolling up in the Benzos, windows tinted with them TVs in it. 22 inch rims cutting up the pavement. When I'm on stage, I leave them all in amazement. I love all types of girls, black, French, and Puerto Rican. I'm ahead of the game. We on Foxy TV. You know my name, Melvin Jackson Jr., aka J Reed. Mm. J Reed, <laughs> woo woo. You know that only happens on Foxy TV. I'm obsessed already. I don't know about you guys, but I'm obsessed. Do you need like you know a background dancer or something? We need, we need some. No, I can audition. You go like a living color. You know we do it. We can MJ, girls, MJ's, MJ's production is gonna be background dancers there too. There you go. There you go. We doing. We going on tour. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Where are we going first? We going to uh, Spain. Yes. We're gonna make it happen. I've always wanted to. There you go. Spain. We coming. <laughs> and we coming hard. <laughs> All right. So one random question for me that I gotta ask, just you know, fun stuff, just to see your personality. So you're stuck in a room. Would you rather be stuck with 10 tarantulas or 20 mosquitoes? That is random. Wow. <laughs> wow. I try to get as random as I can. <sighs> Just hoping they don't have malaria. Um, <laughs> mosquitoes, I guess. Mosquitoes, okay. <laughs> you know mosquitoes like that dark meat, so mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, you just had to ask that question. I mean, tarantulas, ugh, arachnophobia. Just, yeah. It only happens that on Foxy right. yeah, TV. That's why I ain't going to Fear Factor. I'm <laughs> yes, I remember that show, Fear yeah. Factor. Would you ever audition? No, I'm good. I think I would, but then I wouldn't eat like noodles yeah. and stuff yeah, I'm like good. that. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. No fear factor. No. But we will go to Spain, though. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Melvin Jackson Jr., thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I really appreciate it. You're so much fun. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, we'll be supporting, posting, following. And I think you're doing incredible things. And you're definitely you are very too. inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Of course, with the support of MJ's Productions. Yes. And uh, so, you know, we really appreciate your time. And uh, we can't wait to see what you're going to be up to next. Thank you, thank you. So be sure you guys check him out. Go to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We'll get all that information from Melvin Jackson Jr. You're going to see this face again. And also, on another note, um, I have a film that I wrote called Sex, Lies, and Things Women Go Through. It's a woman-based film that mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll be shooting this year. Um, great cast. And um, hopefully it'll be on Lifetime, a &E, one of those, one of those uh, networks. Um, that just, sounds like a Lifetime yeah, movie, it's, it's, for sure. Yeah, when I wrote it, it was a Lifetime movie, but it's, a, yeah. it's about, you know, four women going through different things in life. Um, and I think, you know, you're going to love it. We had a table read and it's just mm -hmm. great feedback from it. And mm -hmm. I think I think it's going to definitely blow people, some people's minds and yeah. change some lives. I know, too. My girlfriends are watching. You know we're going to have a movie night, popcorn and popcorn. wine. Bonbons. Yes, yes, we will be tuned in watching that yes. with our glasses of wine. I love Lifetime, and you know, hey, hey, fellas, you should too. It's all good. It's all <laughs> Lifetime good. is the channel right yes. there. That's like the go to channel. Right. <laughs> so be sure you guys stay tuned. Look, look out for that. And Melvin Jackson Jr., you guys are going to see this face again. Yes. And hey, be sure you check out his social media. And also, if you guys.
guys didn't see our incredible background, I have to give a big shout out to our sponsor who sponsored this amazing space today, Maxwell Dixon Art Gallery here at the Cal Mart in downtown LA. Thank you guys so much for letting us use your space. Hey, be sure you guys go to their website, check out some of their beautiful art. And in the meantime, be sure you check out Foxy TV. Hey, join us on social media. You can like our Facebook page, send us a tweet on Twitter, or you can follow us on Instagram. We support and we follow back. And I'll see you guys again soon. Shannon Fox, Foxy TV. Mm -hmm.